By one estimate, there are now more cell phones than people on this planet. A pocket-sized marvel that changed our world. David Pogue tells us we have one man to thank. There wouldn't be Uber or Lyft or Google Maps or FaceTime or Instagram or Tinder or Snapchat or TikTok or iPhones or Android phones if someone hadn't invented the cell phone. Fortunately, somebody did. I know a lot about the future because I spent all my time there, but I should be thinking about practical things of today. It was Marty Cooper whose memoir tells the story. Chicago native, Navy submarine officer, and eventually an executive at Motorola, maker of police and military radios, and in the early 70s, the two-way radio known as the car phone, something like this one. A radio telephone on your dashboard, ready to connect you while you drive. With These car telephones were not cellular car telephones. That's correct. Okay. They had one transmitter in a city and a very limited amount of radio channels. The chances were one in 20 that you could make a phone call. That's how bad that uh, uh, service was. In 1972, the idea of a cellular network was catching on, where cities were divided into smaller land regions called cells, each with a transmission tower. As you moved from cell to cell, your call would be handed off from one tower to another. AT&T, Motorola's much bigger rival, asked the FCC for a monopoly on cellular communications. Not because it had a vision of phones in our pockets, but to expand its car phone business. They were going to take over our business as well as this whole new thing and do it wrong. People had been wired to their desks and their kitchens for over 100 years, uh, and now they're going to wire us to our cars, where we spend 5% of our time. Motorola wanted to prove that opening up the airwaves to competition would spur more innovation. So I thought about how can we do a dazzling demonstration. The only way to do it is to have a working something. The Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> Cooper's team began with the design, not the technology. It's small enough to put in your pocket, big enough so that it could go between your ears and your mouth. Oh, wait a minute, this isn't a miniature? This is what they actually had in mind? That's exactly right. <laughs> it's that it's a tenth the size of the final one. Yeah. But by the time Motorola had added the battery and all the circuitry, it grew to this size. <laughs> in only three months, Marty Cooper had overseen the construction of a working cell phone. Cooper named it the DynaTAC. You could talk for 25 minutes before the, before the phone ran down. On April 3rd, 1973, Cooper made the world's first public cell phone call as a demonstration for a reporter. So we met this guy on 6th Avenue, New York, in front of the Hilton, and then I had to make a phone call to demonstrate it. And whom did he call? Joel Engel, his arch rival over at AT&T. And I said, uh, Joel, I'm calling you on a cell phone, but a real cell phone, a personal, handheld, portable cell phone. Silence on the other end of the line. Cooper's gambit worked. Scenes like this are becoming commonplace in U.S. cities where cellular is available today. The FCC was so impressed that it opened the cellular industry to competition. More people will take advantage of cellular as its benefits become apparent. Cooper left Motorola in 1983. Since then, he and his wife Arlene Harris, a tech inventor in her own right, have started a series of companies in the cellular industry. Isn't the general advice for relationships not to work with your spouse? We don't agree about everything, but uh, you know that's the spice of life is a disagreement as long as you're, it's friendly. But it seems like if there's a technological dispute, can't you just go, I'll have you know I'm the father of the cell phone. Wouldn't you automatically win? No. <laughs> <laughs> the cell phone has come a long way but Cooper thinks that we've only begun to tap its potential. Oh, David, we have, are only at the very, very beginning. We are going to revolutionize mankind in many ways. I believe that the whole process of education is going to be revolutionized. And, and the other revolutions that are going to happen is in healthcare. I know I sound like an optimist, but poverty is going to be a thing of the past. 
Already, he says, workers in poorer countries use their cell phones to move money around without needing a bank. This has stimulated entrepreneurism. People's lives are being saved. People are being moved out of poverty. Marty Cooper is a notorious fitness buff. At 92, he lifts weights and takes walks, sometimes on the beach in front of his home. But he considers mental exercise even more important. If you don't keep learning all your life, keep an open mind, soak up stuff, be curious, you lose the ability to learn. And to me, that's the scariest thing of all. As for his book, well, Hollywood has already bought the film rights. Who's going to play you in the movie? I was hoping that you would do it, David. <laughs> you're, 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 the, you're the only star that I know. Have your people talk to my people. Yeah, right. <laughs> I love it. Here's what I find strange, Marty. I know this is a stereotype, but as a 92-year-old guy, I might expect you to relish the stories from the past more than the, the stories of the future. Well, I have observed that things in the past have continued to improve. You know, people are richer today, they are healthier today. We've still got a lot of problems, but there's no reason to think that we aren't gonna keep improving.